Uh, thank you for your patience. Need some serious gear to get my computer connected to this conference. So. Um, I'm here today to introduce the multi toner. It's a tool I started last year, um, and I'm going to tell you the whole story of the multi toner and give you a short live demonstration of the current state, and then I will talk about the next steps and invite everyone to become a contributor. So, first things first, my name is Lasse. I work as a free web, freelance web application developer for different clients. And I studied visual communication at the Bauhaus University in Weimar, which is quite close to Leipzig, so I'm mentioning it. Um, and I think often that I should do more design work, but I'm definitely not going back to InDesign because it doesn't run in my system and I don't want it there. <laughs> so, uh, my partner, Anne, is a trained photographer, uh, and geographer and writer, and it felt quite natural for us to start making books together. So we founded our label, Silber and Blei, which is German for silver and lead. Silver stands for silver salts used in analog photography and the lead stands for metal used in casting metal type. So Anna's part is the photography, the silver, and my part is the lead. And we decided, decided to make really good and valuable books using only open source software. And that includes uh, that we provide tools by ourselves if they are missing. Um, our first book is uh, will be about angel statues and cemeteries, and there will be only black and white photography in it. Uh, when researching printing, printing techniques, we found out that using only one ink for black and white reproduction is not enough for our purposes. One ink, uh, in black ink in this case for black and white photography, uh, can only display around 60 different colors. Gamut is really small, I could say. A lot of detail is lost. Uh, the image looks really dull and misses depth. So um, the solution used by printers um, is to um, use more than one ink to display the black and white channel. So what you do is to widen the gamut um, of the output device. Gamut is uh, the set of different colors that device can display, so how many colors the device can display. Um, so what you could do is uh, using black for the shadows, uh, darker green for the midtones, and the lighter gray to display the highlights. Uh, when you use three inks, it's called tritone. With two inks, it's called a duotone. And with four ink, inks, it's called a quatone. And in printing, there's no name like pentatone or stuff like that, but it's possible to entirely to, I don't know, print with seven colors or so. I think um, PostScript has a limitation on eight colors or so. GoScript does more. I'm not sure about that. Um, so multitone stands for any of these options. And we are most probably going to use tritone for our book. So uh, what, we, what we thought about is this workflow um, um, for our images. They're coming from camera, a scanner, we process them and create black and white images and re remove some visible flaws. And then we create the multi-tone images and include these in our final document using context for layout. That's all. But turns out there was no open source tool to create these multi-tone images. And so we had to create it ourselves. That's why I'm here, actually. The best known tool to create multi-tones is the, um, the duotone mode by Adobe Photoshop. And that one lets us export the multitone images as EPS files. And EPS stands for encapsulated postscript. That is essentially postscript with some, some com comments in it. And um, postscript is a programming language by Adobe and it's documented very well. 
uh, document uh, post file can be opened in any text editor and there is an very a very good open source interpreter for postscript it's called ghostscript i think probably everybody heard about that so so everything what we needed is al already available um, I started with uh, learning some PostScript, enough to understand what Photoshop was, was exporting and um, created to start a multi minimalistic multi-tone template, template myself. And then I had to enhance the Python GoScript uh, C bindings for the, for the GoScript C RP because an important part for the direct EPS preview that I'm using um, was, was not implemented then. The multitoner is written in Python using GTK plus 3 uh, as a toolkit. All color previews are rendered using GhostScript directly. Uh, there are two bigger widgets that I implemented myself on top of GTK. It's uh, the curves editor and the preview window. Um, now I'm going to show you the tool itself. I prepared a multitoner profile, I'm calling it, so I don't have to do this live because that's boring stuff, right? You see everything. This one could be smaller. And um, two images. You can actually display many preview images as much as your computer takes. There's no limit for it. A new file would look like this, just empty. Here's an add button where you can um, add new inks. Click the ink and there you can set up the ink, like the name, curve type, and uh, similar k values for um, for the preview. It's not. It's going to be spot color colors at the end, but the color swatches of of the um, swatch books are often giving similar k values. So I decided to to do similar k first. Um, in the upper left corner is the control panel where we can arrange inks. The order is going to be important when it's being printed because that's the order where uh, what the, the printer will use to, to uh, print the inks. And um, to change the properties of an ink, I told that already. <laughs> you see. Um, on the right side, in this area, are uh, color previews for all inks from the output for white is on the left side. So when the input is white, this is on the left side to black input on the right side. And this in the uh, area, on the lower right area is uh, the curve editor where you can uh, change the, the, the transformation functions that are that are used so you can see how the this function behave um, according to the, the the output very well um, the final <laughs> <laughs> the final export of EPS files is done from the preview window, like this one. Just press export and save. And there is um, a command line tool that you could use in an automated process. So if you have like 100 images and change them, sometimes it might be better to have some build process or so. And you can give these EPS files Di directly to your print shop or embed them in your PDF file. The print shop should know what is what what you are about to do. So, um, what's missing? <coughs> Color management is really important for good food feedback. And what I'm doing just now uh, is, is not enough. It's for you don't know how it will look at the end. Actually. 
So GhostScript has an option to load ICC profiles for multi-tone images and I count on it. Unfortunately, it's broken at the moment, so I don't know how good it will work at the end. So I'm working, waiting for GhostScript to fix that bug. Um, with color management, there will be new work again. The interface will need some additions and some data structures will have to change too. And after that, I'll need to organize a serious color profile for the first print job. Uh, I never did this, so I don't know how well print jobs will help me with that. So if anyone can help me with that, please drop me a mail. Uh, it will be much appreciated. And then it's time to go printing and see if everything works out. We'll make a poster for the first test. And when everything is fine, I call it the version 1.0. <laughs> After that, uh, here are some possible features for version 2.0. This uh, library of good color profiles could help people massively to get started. Photoshop has something similar um, and it helps. Better previews without color profiles would be nice too. Uh, a best fit curves feature would help to get running as well. And including component based separations as input would open the door for high fidelity color like hexachrome or more experimental ideas. So there, there's some things we could add to the program. If you like this project and need some inspiration to contrib contribute, here, here it is. I, I won't add support for Windows or Mac myself anytime soon because I don't need this, um, but I, I would you, um, support you if you plan to do so. Packaging uh, would be a good start to attract more users as well as uh, writing documentation. <laughs> and if anyone would start a Libre printing project, like to go to actual print shops and that they know, don't know, everybody knows how to work with those tools we don't have at the moment. <laughs> that would be really good too. Mm. That's all. Thank you. Hmm? So we have time for a few questions. Okay. So a few questions, yes. So it seems to me that one obvious feature that's missing is the ability to save out a set of inks, the order of the inks, and the curves that you've produced. No, no, you um, can't do that. You can do that. Okay. Yeah, you can do If that. you can do that, the next thing you need is a standardized image that goes 0.1%, 0.2%, 0.3%, little swatches like that, which you can then measure. Yeah. And then you can bring that in. So yeah. effectively, you're not, you're not producing an appearance on screen and then using color management to help you get the same. What you're really doing is mixing up mixtures that you hope will give the end result and having a not very good uh, yeah. visualization. Whereas if you did it like that, essentially your visualization would be, okay, for all of the points on this curve, I know I have a measured swatch result, therefore I can produce an alternate image derived from that, which, uses, which can be color managed in the normal way. I, I thought about the profile would not include the curves, but would measure the whole device, like only the inks in the right order. And so you could uh, you could do color I management for the, whole that that won't work. for the whole device, but what, that would be more interesting, I think. Okay. Not just the curve setup would change between images, I think. Some more questions? Not right now. I'm, I'm sure people will come up to you, and you will be here in the coming days. I'm, I'm here, I think, all the time. Okay, good. Thank you very much. All right.